Hello everybody, my name is 7-Eleven and welcome to week one of the UGBC. This is really excited. So for week one, we are going to be fighting David, who um, who has a really scary team. It's a really scary team. So uh, let me go over David's team and then let me, let me go over my team. David drafted Thunderous Incarnate, Excadrill, Togekiss, Reuniclus, Vaporeon, Mega Houndoom, Embor, Drapion, Aerodactyl, Miltank, Hariyama, and Ludicolo. And I drafted Mega Altaria, Superior Mew, Nidoking, Donphan, and Polion, Jellison, Scrafty, Ambipalm, Dusclops, Kabutops, and Magmortar. So, um, Tokakiss scares the heck out of me. Excadrill scares the heck out of me. Thunderous Incarnate scares the heck out of me. Um... I, I'm scared because of their offensive presence. Um, I think I can deal with Embor or Drapion if he brings them. Um, looking at my team, I really don't think that he'll bring Mega Houndoom. Because uh, with Mega Houndoom, um, Mega Altaria will outspeed after one uh, Dragon Dance. Um, then I have something called Nido King and Dawn Fan, which both have you know ground type stab. I have Empoleon, I have Jellicent, I have Scrafty. I really don't think that he's going to bring Mega Hound in. It's just not a good matchup for my team. Um and what else? Reuniclus and Vaporeon are his best walls, I, I believe. So, I really don't have a whole lot for Reuniclus. And, I guess Sir Prayer can take on Vaporeon. But, uh, so anyway, when it came to building this, this team that I built, um, let me see, does he have any knockoff users. He has one knockoff user in uh, Drapion. So that was important to think about. How many Pokemon does he have to set up Stealth Rock? He has Excadrill that can do Stealth Rock, which I doubt he would do. And he has Aerodactyl and he has Miltank. I believe those are his only rock setters. Stealth Rock users. So, that's important. Can you get rid of hazards? He has a Rapid Spinning Ex Excadrill. He has a Defogging Togekiss. That's about it. So, um, during the draft, David was very, very adamant about drafting Thunderous Incarnate. He said, if I don't get him, I'm dropping out. And he did get it. So, I'm going to bet my bottom dollar he's going to bring it. And Thunderous is a pretty good potential lead. So, I'm thinking about Nidoking here. So, if I open up Nidoking and he opens up Thunderous, um, I, decided to, I decided to bring Stone Edge. Because Stone Edge is going to do like... 95% to this uh, this Thunderous Incarnate, just barely missing the knockout. If there's still Throx already on the field, that's great. Um, and Nido King can survive a, um, a Hidden Power Ice. So that's going to be great. And then there's going to be Sucker Punch to get rid of, just to get rid of that Thunderous Incarnate. That's just going to be really, really helpful. Nido King doesn't get paralyzed with Thunder Wave. So hopefully hopefully Neil King can take out this this big big threat to my team. Because I don't want that Thunderous Incarnate paralyzing my whole team. And that would be the end of the game. So um, I said, okay, well what else can, can Nido King do? Well seeing that he has a Tokikiss and a Vaporeon and an Aerodactyl. I decided to run Thunder Punch and then Poison Jab 
is mostly for the Toki Kiss, but uh, Poison Jab would also work well if uh, if you bought the Ludi Colo by any, for whatever reason. Seeing as how, um, seeing as how things would be outsped, we would be outspeeding Nido King anyway, and it would be really important to switch up my moves. I decided to go with Life Orb instead of a choice item, or a Salt Vest, or a Berry, or Rocky Helmet, whatever. So next I have this beautiful Superior. And um, so if, when I was looking at Superior, I was thinking, what can take out the Superior the best? Well, I was thinking Aerodactyl. That, that would be something. I think the most likely thing to take on this Superior would either be the Drapion or the Excadrill, bo both using Poison Jab. So I decided to go with this item, the Kebia Berry. Halves damage taken by super effective uh, Poison type moves. So I would go for a Leaf Storm, get up to plus two special attack, and then either of those Pokemon would go for um, for Poison Jab, and it would only do half to me because of the Kebia Berry, or maybe even 60% max, I think it was. And so then I could just go for a Giga Drain or another Leaf Storm, and then that Pokemon would be gone. That Pokemon would be gone. So um, when preparing for this team, I said, you know what? I think I would just, um, I think I, I, I think I was just planning for what Pokemon are going to be the most efficient to take out the Superior. I guess Mega Houndoom could be a thing. Um, so I have Hidden Power Rock to predict a switch. Um, Hidden Power Rock would hit the Togekiss, and it would hit the Aerodactyl. And the Mega Houndoom. So that that's why I have Hidden Power Rock. That just seemed like the, the best um, thing for me to do. And that and for Taunt, I put Taunt on uh, just in case I was up against a, a setup Pokemon of some sort. Um, and just the standard, just the standard EV spread, Tim and Nature. So that's their Purrier. Up next we have Ambipalm, and for Ambipalm, I don't have return on this. Um, I decided Focus Sash would, would be nice. I think uh, Fake Out would be great for, um, you know, that um, priority pressure, and U-Turn would be extremely useful. The thing is with Ambipom, Ambipom is my fastest Pokemon, and his fastest Pokemon is Mega Houndoom. I don't think he's going to bring Mega Houndoom, just by looking at my team. And yes, yeah, since Ambipom outspeeds with the fastest Pokemon on his team, which I don't think he's going to bring, except for the Aerodactyl, I decided to. You know, just do Focus Sash. Um, so there's Fake Out, U-Turn, and I decided to go for Ice Punch in case Ambipalm was up against the Thunderous, or the Togekiss, or the Aerodactyl. So Ice Punch would be would work out really well. And I decided, I decided to go for a Low Sweep, uh, because Low Sweep, as you can see here, 65, so just barely under what Technician helps out with. But it always lowers speed. Always, always lowers speed. And I was thinking, well, if the Excadrill were to come in and I went for a low sweep, if that doesn't KO, it would do a lot of damage, and Excadrill would be at a low enough speed to uh, revenge kill with something else. And <clears throat> that's basically the same thing with Mega Houndoom. So, Low Sweep is, is good for the Excadrill and the Mega Houndoom. 
Um, so that's my thought process with Ambipalm. Standard EV spread. Nothing crazy there. Next is Altaria. So um, I decided to go with Dragon Dance, Frustration, Earthquake, and Roost. So looking at his team, uh, I don't see anything here that would try to Will-O-Wisp me, except for Mega Houndoom and Embor. And both of which I can just go for Earthquake. And after one Dragon Dance, I'll outspeed everything except for Choice Scarf users. And Frustration does a lot to literally everything. Literally everything except for the Excadrill. So, um, I really don't have much for a Uniclus. And Superior is the only thing I have for Vaporeon. Just in case Superior goes down and Vaporeon is still around. Um, my best chance really is with Mega Altaria to go with Dragon Dances and, and just go for Frustration. Um, and with, with a, a minimum happiness for uh, Frustration. Just in case uh, David wants to do something sneaky with something and he gets Frustration with either Copycat or even in against other people, a ditto was was drafted. In case that happens, then they get frustration, but they will have maximum happiness. So frustration won't do anything. And earthquake. David has a lot of Pokemon Week Two ground. He he has an Excadrill. He has a Mega Houndoom. He has an Embor. He has a Drapion. That's four Pokemon Week to ground. So um, that wouldn't be very smart of him to bring all four. And then Roost, just in case, uh, you know, I get hit with a priority move or, or I, I get damage initially and I want to recover up. Roost is like the best option there. So hopefully Miguel Toria can do a little bit of sweeping. We'll see. Next is Jellicent. Um, Jellicent uh, is hopefully going to play a pretty big role here. Um, I have the Waken Berry to reduce uh, electric type moves. And the reason for that is because one, he is a Thunderous Incarnate and um, why don't you have any EVs? I, I don't know why the, it, it, re, it did that, but I remember it was a calm nature like that to 48 EVs there and the rest in special attack. That was what Jellicent was like. So with a whole lot of special defense and um, hit points investment, uh, a Volt Switch doesn't do half. Thunderbolt would do over half, of which, uh, you, you know, you can do Recover, and with the Wake and Berry, that helps a lot. I can do Scald, Will-O-Wisp, Hex. Hex is mostly for the Reuniclus. Um, so Scald would be nice to against the Excadrill. It would be nice against the Mega Houndoom. It would be nice against the Embor. It would be nice against the Aerodactyl. So I decided to bring Scald. Uh, it wouldn't be nice against the Vaporeon, but we'll, we'll play around that. Um, so I, I thought that Jellicent would be a really important addition to the team, especially because a few things. One, it's a very good special wall with Recover. So that's really important. But uh, out of 12 Pokemon that David drafted, Thunderous, Dokukis, Reuniclus, Vaporeon, Mega Houndoom, like almost all of the first half of his draft are special attackers. And so Jelsint is probably going to cause problems for, for David. So um, that's my reasoning 
for bringing Jellicent. And just in case so something were to happen, I uh, would also have Empoleon. Empoleon's going to be really helpful here. Um, what did I do? So for, for Empoleon, this is my Stealth Rock user. So Stealth Rock is, is going to be good against the Thunderous, against the Togekiss, against the Mega Houndoom, against the Embor, against the Aerodactyl. So Empoleon is going to be good here to set up Stealth Rock, and I'll be able to roar anything that tries to set up. Uh, if, if Empoleon can get off an Icy Wind before it faints, then that's going to be really helpful in revenging, revenge killing something, um, which is similar to why Ambipom is low sweep. And so, um, and your EVs are a little bit messed up too. Let me go like that. So, pretty much the same as uh, Jellicent, exactly the same as Jellicent here. So that's going to be pretty useful to be, hopefully be just walling most of his team. Empoleon doesn't get recovery. But uh, that's my strategy here. I can see him leading with, um, with Aerodactyl for Stealth Rock. If he brings Taunt, then this Mental Herb is just for Taunt. Then I can't get Taunted. Single use, but... If I if he goes for taunt, then the turn that I get stealth rock up, then I get stealth rock up. Um. So that's my team: N Nido King, Superior, Ambipom, Mega Altaria, Jellicent, and Empoleon. Um. Yeah. If he brings the Hariyama, then that could be. Problematic. I'd probably just go into Mega Altaria and go for Frustration. Good thing that Hariyama is pretty slow. So, um, that's my team, and I hope you enjoyed. And uh, we will have my battle with David pretty soon. So, I'll see you guys later. Peace.